everything is going wrong with this sermon today. I, 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 it's, it's very amazing to see that the enemy is just hitting every, it, it even cut off the, the, the YouTube. So Father, we're going to go into your word. So brothers and sisters, can you write down Luke chapter 18, verse 10? Then I want you to write down Luke chapter 10, verse 18. And then I want you to write down Romans chapter 7, verse 24. Um, like I was sharing about the faith that I was expressing to this lady our God created the world without it being broken. And then the devil came and convinced these two children of God that they was missing something from God, which brought disobedience into the world. When that disobedience got brought into the world, I was sharing with this person, I said, when... God, when Adam and Eve, before Adam and Eve sinned, and I really want you brothers and sisters to get a bar of this. Before Adam and Eve sinned, they were naked and not ashamed. They was in the presence of God. They had glory on them. Everything was good. Once they ate, their eyes were opened and they realized that they were naked and they covered their private parts, which means that something happen within that time frame that made them focus on that part which is one of the interesting things because when you look at the sin of fornication and adultery and homosexuality and the perversion of the world it's the only sin against the body because the body is the temple of God and when we get into this place like we're so good to come before God that we're walking in right standings and we're all this, are, are, are we really? When, when we read these stories of examples and people in the Bible, are we really looking like this? And I'm going to tell you what opened this door up for me to think about all this was last week, Brother Paul said something to me that made me feel good, but also made me sit back and think. He said, Pastor Ronnie, you're a good example of what a godly man is. And when he said that to me, I, I, I felt good, but I also sat myself down before God and said, no, I'm not, God, because I could be so much more. No, I'm not, God, because... My character could be more better. No, I'm not, God, because I expect these people, these brothers and sisters that I'm teaching to be in a different place in their spiritual walk than they are going to be because of where they're at with you. And I really, really humbled myself before God. And so the interesting thing is that last week's sermon was faith without works. And the sermon before that was, the blessed are those who believe and don't see. So we're going to take all this and wrap it up into a humble state. I want to read something to you. When I, I got up this morning and I was really drained and the spirit moved me to just get on my knees and I started praying. And as I was praying, I was like, God, I come before you with a bowed head and a humble heart because I need to, I need to come undone before you. And this is what came to me. Luke chapter 18, verse 10. And it says, two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. 
God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this tax collector. He's, he's coming before a God that a lot of us come before like this. Like, we're so righteous in our walk, in our thoughts, in our actions and deeds. And it broke me. Because I'm telling you, Paul's statement really made me look at Ronnie. Not at anybody else. It made me look at Ronnie's walk and Ronnie's place with God. And just the, just the, the, the humbleness that I don't have. It made me think about it. Listen to verse um, 11. No, verse 12. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector standing afar off would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me. A sinner. Brothers and sisters, not only did Paul's statement do that to me, but I was driving the other day, and this is all going toward the sermon, believe you me. I was driving the other day, and I'm coming from the bank, and I turn, and there's this island in the middle of the thing, and I'm turning the corner and I see the man sitting on the island. Now I'm going to the freeway, so I'm not really thinking about it, but the man sitting on the island grieved me. So there was a taco stand and the spirit of God said, you got 20 bucks in your pocket. So I jumped out, pulled over, ordered me two tacos and him two tacos. So when the tacos were done, I'm walking back to the man on the island. And I come and I walk on the island and I kneel down to come to eye level with this man. And I'm handing him this food and the soda and the money and this car is driving by and it's honking its horn, waving it, going like this to me. And I, I raise my hand and I'm like, okay. So after I pray with the man and give him the food and tell him I could help him because I want to work for him and whatnot, I got up and walked away disturbed. Like, I get you are trying to give me praise for what God is doing through me when you have the same power in you to do the same thing. And it just made me think of just how much I have and want to do for God, but am I really being that way? And there's this humility going on inside of me that's really making me think. And it, it's amazing because I've watched a lot of people in the last, geez, two months, three months, go through some stuff and on my line, on my line, print calling me, texting me, Ronnie, Pastor, blah, blah, blah. And then kind of when they got their breakthroughs or things changed, it's like they stopped coming to church, they stopped calling. And I told God, that's amazing how they do all that. And he said, how do you think I feel? And I was like, wow. Once again, God is allowing me to, to taste a little bit of what Jesus feels about us. We, we get these answers to these prayers. We get these breakthroughs. And somehow we forget about the person that did it. So it made me interesting because it took me, the first one I was looking up the scripture in Luke, it took me back to this one in Luke 10, 18. And it's very interesting because this one is talking about the devil. It says, and he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I said, wow, that was because Satan's pridefulness and arrogance wanted to be like God. And so this morning, as my prayer ended, I said this. And I'm sharing this with you because a lot of you, please, 
Whatever you do in your walk with God, don't ever take yourself up higher than God is taking you. Don't ever think that you've reached this plateau where you have this real deep, intimate relationship with God because it can always grow. And humility is what we all need because God is using us. We're not doing some great thing. It's the spirit of God's Holy Spirit that equips us to do these things. We are to, it's, it's amazing. I, I sat back yesterday and I was, I was at my mom's house and both my daughters were there and my sister was there and my nephew was there and my son-in-law was there and my granddaughter was there and my mom. And I'm taking this video of looking at my family. I'm looking at my family and I'm like, I have not saw this in such a long time. And by the grace of God, because I came back from being by myself, I was able to picture this moment. My mom, my daughter, and my granddaughter. Both my daughters were in the same room that are fruit of my labor. I'm fruit of my mom's labor. labor. My sister is there. Her son is there. My daughter's daughter is there. And I'm looking at this moment and I'm humbled to think, who am I? Look at what's in front of me that I had the blessing to see. It just stirred something in me. In Romans chapter 7, verse 24, Paul, the apostle, said this, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? I thank God through Jesus Christ, our Lord, so then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. That was me this morning. Oh, wretched man that Ronnie is. Wishing that I could have threw dirt and had sackcloth on my back and not really understood why God took me there. And then I thought about this sermon because I want you to think about the guy in Luke chapter 18. The Pharisee is coming before God. These are pastors. These are leaders. These are ministers of this time who Deep so much that they got it all together with their big churches and their and their fancy cars and, 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 and they're, they're talking about how good they preach. I'm thinking, who are we to think we are doing anything but what God is doing through us? We are co-laboring with God. We we should be honored that God chose us to be. The, the, the pastor of the, of, of, the, of the church. And I'm thinking of this Pharisee. And I'm thinking of Ronnie. I'm thinking, where am, am I anywhere in here? Because what we're going to learn about today is the authority and the power given to the body of Christ for the glory of God. But a lot of pastors and Christians have been used by God and the glory hasn't been given to God. It's been given to man. And you know, I, I get here every now and then where there's this deep self-cleansing and thing that goes on before me where I feel ashamed to even pray to God. And I didn't do anything. Paul's statement. What happened with the man? All this stuff just made me think. If I want to operate in power and authority, first, I'm blessed because I believe.
believe and I have never seen. That's where we started this, this journey. And this is the journey that's been going on in my head. Blessed are they who believe and do not see. And I'm thinking, wow, that's us. And then faith without works is, is dead. Are we adding action and belief in the things we're praying for as if they already are happening? Because we are blessed and we don't see, but we believe. So if we believe and our prayer is lining up with the word of God and God has dropped that word in our spirit, we have found it in the Bible. God is telling us to stand on it. We have to act as if the prayer is on its way. When a woman gets pregnant and she knows it, she starts to prepare for the baby already because she knows without even getting the, 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 the test or anything, she knows there's something inside of me. When a man proposes to a woman, they start to prepare for the wedding. And that's faith with works. So in order to walk in the authority that the, that the uh, apostles walked in, we have to first be humble. Because God said, I will share my glory with no man. You're probably saying, Pastor, what did all of this last 30 minutes have to do with this? If we aren't examining our own walk with God, if we aren't really humbled brothers and sisters before the Lord, do you really think he's going to give us his power and authority to walk in? I love you all. And one thing I could say is that there's a few of you on here why I don't stop doing this. Rather we get a church building or not, because I could see the hunger. And I always think of the scripture that says if Paul was so diligent to minister to the Corinthians, I think it's 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 11, he says, I don't give place to someone else to come minister to you because they'll mislead you. Because many false prophets and false teachers have gone. And, devil, and the devil has ministering angels. And so he's telling them he's being watchful over them and he's protecting them. That's how I feel. That's what keeps me doing this. As much as sometimes I just want to go be the word and pray with God myself. I think about that. James chapter 5, verse 17. The title of this message is Authority and Power. I will send this out to you guys today. Um, again, my computer. Um, Joshua chapter 10. Oh, I'm sorry. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Psalms 37, verse 3 to 5. And then Joshua chapter 10, verse 12 to 13. Now, I would like, if you can, to take your hands and put two imprints on your Bible. Psalms 37, 5. And then I want you to go and put your fingers on Proverbs chapter 3 so we can be able to just kind of jump back and forth to the two because I want you to get a full understanding of what is going on here. So first and foremost, when I opened up this morning and I said, we are like the people in the Bible. They, they were no different than us. We, we all die, we all born, we all bleed, we all cry, we all feel pain. 
We all have this relationship with God. We, we, there's nothing different. The only difference was that they had to go through a lot of stuff that we, we don't, didn't have to because they were examples. But I want you to listen to this. So let, 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 let's go back to two things. Blessed are those who believe and do not see. I want you to think about that first and foremost. Blessed are those who believe and have not seen. Faith without works is dead. So I'm going to take this faith that I have and I'm going to put it into action to the Jesus, the God of the Holy Spirit that I believe that I have not seen. James chapter 5, verse 15. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. Just, 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 just that. Elijah, the man who called fire down from the sky, the man who caused the rain to come down, this man, Elijah, was in the same nature as us, meaning he is just a man like us. That, that's what that means. So I, I'm putting all this together, humbleness before God, realizing we are nothing without the spirit of God in us to perform the duties that God is calling us to perform. This is who we are. And blessed are those who believe and don't see because God is going to say, I'm going to give you this power and authority because you're going to give it the praise right back to me. You're going to give the honor right back to me. You're going to do all these things right back to me and you're not going to take my glory. See, the apostles always gave the glory back to God. Uh, in the book of Acts, after the great powerful move of God with the spirit uh, the two apostles were walking and they saw a beggar and, and he's there and he's asking for money and they tell him silver and gold have we none but what we do have we will give to you which is the power of God through the Holy Spirit they're like I'm going to give you a greater gift than money because with the gift of the Holy Spirit and the anointing and the understanding, you can go and make your own money. But you will know that the wisdom and everything you got came through that spirit that you invited into your life. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. Now go to Proverbs chapter 3. And we're going to read verses 3 to 5. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablets of your heart and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. The beautiful thing was that Elijah was listening to God. God is telling Elijah, we went through this already, that he's telling Elijah something that happened in the Old Testament. So Elijah's being reminded of the word of God. He trusts in God. He has peace in his heart and he knows what he's about to do is the will of God. So he's a man like us who's listening to the word of God like us, and he's moving with the trust that God is going to do what he's telling him to do. That's like us. If God drops something in, our, if, if, 
If God wanted me to be humbled, he did it. It was up to me to listen to it. And sometimes God will allow things to happen in our lives, brothers and sisters, to drive us into hearing something that we needed to hear from him. And it's, it's so amazing to think that Joseph went through 13 years sold in slavery, in prison, to do the will of God. But God had to use his 11 brothers to do evil to him in order for God's will to happen through him. Do you see that? He said, what you meant for evil, God meant for good. But what did Joseph do? Joseph stayed humble. He stayed obedient. And he trusted in God. And he, he never did, went the other way from God. He kept with God. And when God, when God said, oh, now my will for what you just went through for 13 years is now going to happen. And when he walked, please get this, please get this. When he went before Pharaoh, well, come power and authority. He came before Pharaoh and Pharaoh said, tell me the dream. And he told him and Pharaoh said, here's the signet ring. Here's the robe. There's the wife. There's no other word higher than mine but yours. And Joseph was humbled. He didn't get prideful. He didn't get arrogant. He didn't be like, yeah, God owed me this. And when he saw his accusers, his brothers, he had remorse for them. He could have killed them, but his humility, humility is so strong, brothers and sisters. His humility, his humbleness brought them love. And then he revealed himself. We, we got to be humble. We got to, I, I, you know, I don't even know what to say. I, I, like I said, I thank Paul for what he said, but it made me go examine myself. And, and, and it didn't make me go examine myself because I thought I'm doing some bad things. It made me examine myself because that's what I was being led to do. And so I did what I felt I was being led to do. And God ain't going to waste nothing. Listen in, 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 in Psalms, th uh, 30, Psalms 37, verse 3 and 5. I, oh, I read, okay. Psalms 37, verse 3 to 5. Trust, there goes that word again. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. I want to walk in power and authority. Blessed is he or she who believes and does not see. I hear God's word. I can see what I'm reading in the spirit. You could be reading in your Bibles and something jump out at you and you're stuck on it. And you're like, and you're getting, you're looking for something to write with, highlight, and this scripture stood out to you very intently. God is speaking to you. Now you got to meditate. Joshua 1 8, meditate on this word day and night. So I've gotten this scripture embedded in my soul. God is telling me something. I got to search this out because he's telling me something. So blessed is he or she who believes and has not seen. I have dropped this in you now. 
stand on what I just gave you and walk in it. And I will give you power and authority to move in the direction and the calling and the gift with the anointing of the Holy Spirit to do what I'm calling you to do. And then when you do it or you go there or you speak to that person or you lay hands on the sick, you're going to turn around and say, blessed be the name of the Lord. When I came to the level of the man, the purpose, this is what was told in my spirit when I was walking over there. I want you to humble yourself before him. Do not have him looking up to you as if you were God, but come down to his level. And that's exactly what I did. And I told him, this is from the Lord. He loves you. And the conversation went on and I'm like, this is, God sent me. I was driving over there, turned over there, walked back because God loves you. And he wants to, you to know it. That is the movement of God in the power of God. And you could see it all on his face. Because he was just like, you know, somebody else had some money out the window and he's running to go get it. But here God came and brought me right down to his level. Do you understand how that made him feel? He didn't feel unworthy. He felt noticed. And that's what God wants from us to be humble servants and to do what we're supposed to do in that moment. You got to bring the Lord into it. Make sure it's part of his will. We read this last week, 1 John chapter 1, verse 5, 17. If it be the will of God, Joshua chapter 10, Joshua chapter 10. Verse 12 and 13. Then Joshua, a man like in the same nature as us, then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said, in the sight of Israel. He made it clear that they're going to know who did this. Son, Stand still over Gideon, I mean Gibeon, and moon in the valley of Ajalom. So the sun stood still and the moon stopped till the people had revenged upon their enemies. Is this not written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and did not hasten to go down for about a whole day. This man, Joshua, in the same nature as us, talked to God and told God to give them favor. God stopped the sun and the moon on the word of his son, who was obedient and humble. Joshua took over for Moses, and Joshua wanted to be just like what Moses was, obedient to the Lord. So Joshua took over where the Lord, where Moses died, Joshua took over. You have to understand, Joshua was a man of war, but he would go before God and find out what God wanted him to do first. That's what Elijah did. Are you understanding this blessed are those who believe yet do not have not seen? We're walking 
in this book and the humility of this book. Let's go back to the faith we was talking about in the beginning. My faith of holding this book and living my life like this book, willing to be persecuted, talked about, laughed about, but I'm going to live the way this book is telling me to because I believe even though I didn't see. So I'm going to hold God to his word that he's telling me to stand on. So if I believe what I did not see, but I believe it, I know it's speaking to me, now I'm going to stand on this, and then I'm going to turn around and do what God said. I'm going to hold him to his word because he said it. Are you kind of seeing the flow of where we're going? We already know the world's coming to an end. Why do anybody believe it or not? Because we're going to die anyway, one way or another. But I'm going to die in the Lord. I want to die and go and see Jesus for myself, to be absent from the body, to be present of the Lord. I shared with you guys 1 Corinthians chapter 15 the other day to get everybody to understand the importance of why we need to live right. Because we are all going to die and it is not over then. We will have what we, what we lived on this earth after. Again, blessed are those who believe. I have to believe by faith that God is telling me I'm coming back. I've risen. I'm seated at the right hand of the Father. And I am coming back. And you are going to die. And you're either going to heaven or you're going to hell. It's your choice. That's still faith. Because everybody's living as if it's only for today. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Mark chapter 6, verses 17 to 18. Now, I'm going to send this to you because there are scriptures that go with Mark 16, verses 17 to 18. That's going to confirm what we're going to read. But for time's sake, I will send this to you, but if you want to write them down real quick, um, it's Acts chapter 5, verse 12 through 16, Luke chapter 10, verse 17 to 20, the focal point being verse 20, and that's humility, Acts chapter 2, verse 4. And then James chapter 5, verse 14. Now, we have the Holy Spirit in us. We have a portion of the Holy Spirit working through us. We don't have it in full measure like Jesus. It would kill us. But the more obedient, the more humble, the more we study... All of you are where you are with God because of you. If you are in the word, really in the word, and, 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 and being drawn to the word and just in it, you're going to grow. And you're going to get more God. You're going to get more understanding. Understand something. My job is to, is to teach you, not just to preach. So if you have a question and you don't ask, you're not getting it. But the Bible said... The teacher is in you, which is the Holy Spirit. Now, you may not get what he's trying to say, and that's what pastors and teachers are for. That's our mandate and responsibility to you. But if you hunger for more God, you're going to get more God. You're not going to be without more God. Let me tell you something. It didn't take much for me to realize I needed to be humble before God. And it's because of the relationship, I believe. It was me understanding that something in Ronnie felt the need to humble himself. I don't want to be arrogant and prideful. I don't want to be in control. And, and I am a lot because even with my job, God has blessed my job with the wisdom that he's given me through Saved by Grace because I took Saved by Grace to the job 
and they still kind of downplay me, but I have to be humble about it because God gave me the ability and the gifts and the talents and the resources to do this. And in his time, if he chooses, he will do what he wants to do in me and through me. Same thing here. I can only teach you what I know, but I have to be very humble and patient with those of you that aren't where I would like you to be. Because most of my wisdom and knowledge from the Lord came through the darkest times of my life. Came through the times of my life when I've been alone, which is pretty much my whole walk with God. So I paid a price to get this, but I also have to understand and be very mindful of the blessing that I have to have this knowledge, to have this wisdom, to be able to let God move through me and do things and preach things and teach things that I have no knowledge of and at the same time learn. It's an honor to serve God. It's an honor to be used by him to preach his word. I will never tell you I'm preaching good because the moment I, and a lot of pastors do that, it's like, how are you doing anything? You can't tell about a God you don't really know unless he's telling you about himself. It's like, it's like your mate or your children. Someone could tell you something. You'd be like, uh-uh, that ain't my son. That ain't my daughter. That ain't my husband or wife. But I know, I know them. I know everything about them. My son would not do that. My daughter would not do that. My husband, my wife would not do that. No one could tell me about my mom that's contrary to the way my mom, because I'd be like, that's not my mom. That's not my mom. So it's like us and God. That wasn't God over there. That was the devil. Oh, that wasn't the devil. That was you being used by the devil. That was God. That man, that woman, they just got used by God. Did you not see the anointing? I remember when someone, twice in my life, maybe three times I've heard this, you're glowing. I wasn't glowing. The Holy Spirit was illuminating me. At that moment was the presence of God being extolled out of me and someone saw it for them to see that that right now is not Ronnie. That is the anointing upon Ronnie. At that moment, God was revealing himself. It doesn't happen all the time. But the world has to humble themselves before God to be used by God. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Wow, who is this in chapter 10? Behold. Ooh, wee, God, look at what God just did. Wow. We just read, and he said to them, I saw Satan fall like a lightning from heaven. And then the next scripture says, Behold. I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. When you read those scriptures that I told you that follow this, you're going to learn about that power and authority. Matter of fact, you know what? We're going to go there. It's all right, because we can extend this. Go to Acts chapter 15. We're going to read them scriptures. It's all right. I'm not going to stop God's movement. For me. I need you all to get an understanding of this. Acts chapter 15, verse 12 to 16. Then all the multitude kept silent. Oops, sorry. My bad, my bad. Acts chapter 5. I'm in chapter 5, verse 12. And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people. 
And they were all with one accord in Solomon's porch. Yet none of the rest dare join them, but the people esteemed them highly. And believers were increasingly added to the Lord. Multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Also, a multitude gathered from the surrounding city, cities to Jerusalem bring in sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits and they were all healed. Brothers and sisters, <laughs> we have the same living, life-giving spirit of the Holy Ghost inside of us. Wanting to do this through us I have been used by God to do some of these things and was amazed at what God did when he did it. Not once, not twice. My mom was a witness of one of them because she was the one God did it to. And I'll never forget the prompting of the spirit. And I was a baby Christian, but I had childlike faith. Childlike faith. And the spirit kept telling me, go heal your mom, go heal your mom. And I'm thinking, that's not, that's me. And it just kept saying and saying, I was doing the laundry in my mom's garage. And it kept telling me, my mom had sp sprang her leg. And I said, okay, okay, I'm going to go. And I remember walking up the stairs thinking, man, this is kind of interesting. But all of a sudden, by the power of God, her leg, I laid hands on her, started speaking in tongues and raised her to her feet and she started walking with a limp and I, and she started crying and I remember her specifically saying, how did you do this? I said, I didn't, that was God, but you got healed according to the amount of faith you had because you wasn't really sure that that was going to happen. I remember going and praying over my cousin who had committed suicide, but he didn't die. I remember laying hands on him. And the Bible in my spirit, I remember God saying, tell no one to touch you. Tell no one to intercede in this prayer with you. Tell them just to pray. And I remember my mom, I was in San Jose. Me and my mom have walked through this journey together. And I remember being in San Jose and I was with a friend. And I said, I got to go home. And he said, why? I said, something's not right with my mom. And I remember driving back to my mom. You women in the women's group, you can ask her these things. And I remember calling her saying, what's wrong? She was me, all the, the, the devils and the demons, they're just, it's crazy. And I'm like, you interceded, didn't you? And sure enough, my mom did. Why? Because I'm her son. But God said, no one in, I, no one's to intercede in this because at that moment, God was equipping me to do what he wanted to do. And I remember coming and praying with my mom and laying hands on her and leaving. And within minutes, she was no, no activity from the enemy at all. And I remember a friend of mine telling me, you need to go see the movie, The Green Mile. And I'm like, why? He goes, because the guy in that movie did what you did. So I went and saw it. I was like, wow, that's powerful. I've cast, God has used me to cast demons out of people. I've been, I've seen the power of God move, but I was humbled. I was humbled. But I've also been arrogant and prideful and was running a church with another pastor. And God said, sit down. And I remember sitting down. And the pastor goes, which one? I said, God told me to sit down because I'm getting prideful and arrogant. We have to be sensitive to that. But these men of God, they was knowing that they, they interacted with God. And their job was to be used by God. And their faith took them all the way to death. 
That's why you got to read Hebrews 11 all the way to death. They died in faith, knowing that they were going to be with Jesus. That has to be us. Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2, verse 10. Luke chapter 2, verse 10 to 20. I'm sorry, Luke chapter 10, verse 17 to 20. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. Then the seven returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subjected to us in your name. And he said to them, Oh, this is, he went right back again to, to, to Luke. We just read this he, about the power he gave them. But verse 20 is the powerful statement. Nevertheless, do not, do not, do not rejoice in this. That the spirits are subjected to you, but rather rejoice because your name is written in heaven. He made it clear to them, don't get prideful, don't get arrogant, you didn't do nothing. And don't be all excited because you could cast demons out of people or bring healing upon people. But be happy more than rather that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life in heaven. That's what you should be rejoicing in. That is where we're supposed to be. Not this great thing. I am not doing nothing. I didn't do all those things that I'm telling you stories of and there's many more. I didn't do them. I was just used to do them. And when people talk to me, sometimes I won't say, you know, I, I, I just, I, I don't want to take the glory from God because I know what it's like. I'm not trying to be like Lucifer kicked out of heaven. We're going to read these last two and then we're going to have to cut it short. We'll finish this at Bible study because it's already over time. Um, James, I mean, Acts chapter, we're going to write that. Oh, Acts chapter 2, verse 4. Acts chapter 2. Verse 4. Acts chapter 2, verse 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The Spirit of God may you may be somewhere and you're not talking in a heavenly tongue you're talking in an unknown tongue to yourself but someone around you will turn and look at you and start speaking back to you in that tongue and you're like whoa what's he talking about when you just spoke to that person's language and the spirit gave you the utterance for that and then there's the spirit that is talking to God. It's a heavenly spirit, the, the, the tongue of angels. Paul talks about that. God has equipped us, brothers and sisters, with power, with authority. But remember something. The Bible's clear. How will you know them? Because signs and wonders will follow them. Did, did, did you hear it? Follow you. People are going to see you and know that man, that woman is anointed by God. Not you. If they will say that man or that woman is anointed by God. Because they will know that what you just did, only God could have did it. And what do you do? That's the glory of God working through me. That wasn't me. Last scripture. James chapter 5, verse 14. James chapter 5, verse 14. And for those of you that are on YouTube or Facebook, if you want to hear the remainder of this service, you're more than welcome to come to Bible study on Tuesday. Uh, you can always send your email and we'll send you the link. James chapter 5, 
verse 14. James chapter 5, verse 14. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anoint him with oil and the name in the name of the Lord. Verse 15. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven him. Some people are messed up because they're living in sin and they're sick. God has given you the power. Now I need you to hear this as we close. I, of some of you have been witness to this by myself where God has, you're speaking to me and God's spirit brings something to you through me that I didn't even know. And you said, wow, how did you know that? I didn't, but he did. So now I'm going to pray with you and you're going to stop doing what you're doing and God's going to heal you and your sin is going to be forgiven you. That power is going to come through the anointing of the Holy Spirit. One last thing, remember, not only is signs and wonders going to follow you that are walking in authority and power, but the Bible says you will know them by their fruits. So I got to have good signs and wonders following me and the fruit of my labor, which is you and other people, that's what they're seeing. What type of fruit are you bearing? It's, it's people saying, man, man, Brother Paul, Sister Nikki, Bernadette, Derek, they just, man, the Lord is really with them. And all you got to do is, <laughs> Bernadette says it a lot. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And that's what we're supposed to do. But let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You don't always have to talk about God, but actually exemplify him in your actions, your words, and your deeds. Because a lot of people have been broken by Jesus, broken by the devil, and they don't want to hear about him. But the more we act like Jesus, the more we talk like Jesus, the more we're, people are seeing him, they're like, man, there's something, man, you know, there's something different. I just, and then you have that open door. You're waiting for the open door for the spirit to move. You don't always got to go around, praise the Lord, let me pray with you. But hey, you know what? Like when I came down to that man's level, I didn't ask him, are you saved? Do you want to be saved? I just, I just said, here, here's some food, here's some money. I have a resource for you to get you off the street and come to find out he was a veteran. I go, I got even more resources for you. And then he opened up and started telling me about his drug addiction and how he's off of it. And we're having this conversation. I wasn't talking about Jesus yet. And so I said, well, I, I gave him my card and I said, I am going, if you call me, I will provide the resource to you. Do you not know the way that that man looked was like, Jesus didn't just come and give me something, but Jesus came to spend time with me and, and, and knelt down and I seen it in this man. I felt it through this man and he didn't make me feel like unworthy because he came to my level. And Father God, I truly, truly, Father, am, am humbled. There's so much work to be done in me, Lord. There's so many layers that need to be pulled back. There's so much healing of my broken heart that needs to be fixed, Lord. There, I am truly an undone man before such a holy God, Father. But I ask, Heavenly Father, through the through the pain of my own heart and the humility of my own spirit, Lord, that you comfort 
that you protect, that you heal, and that you restore the faith and the belief and the hope in every person that heard this message, Lord, that they will take serious time aside just to be alone with you and to be transparent with you about their own brokenness, about their own contradictions in their walk, about their own arrogance and pride. Heavenly Father, we are, we are people that want to be in right standings with you. We know we are forgiven, Father, but we may not have forgiveness in our own hearts. And if we can't have forgiveness in our own hearts, Lord, you can forgive us according to your word. Father, meet my brothers and my sisters, the married couples, the engaged couples, the mother and the father who is overseeing their children that are wayward right now. Lord, heal them. Lord, strengthen them. Lord, provide for them. For you are an ever-present help, Lord, in our time of need. Lord, I do not ask that you take nothing away from this crooked and perverse world that you are using to bring souls to the kingdom. Rather it be COVID, rather it be uh, 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 the drugs, rather it be the brokenness, whatever you're using, the diabetes, whatever it is that you are using to humble someone, to get them to realize they need you for the healing, they need you for the deliverance, they need you in their marriages, they need you as parents, grandparents, Lord, myself included, Heavenly Father, have mercy upon us and forgive us of our sins and our doubt and our arrogance and our self-control and even our own self-pity trying to manipulate you, Father. Forgive us and heal our land, Lord, that you may hear our prayers, Father, that you may save our family and friends, that we will truly be vessels of righteousness. Heavenly Father, I speak as a man, just a man who can definitely use a move of God in my life. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.